telemedicine has multiple applications. And I think telemedicine is just a way to communicate better and to make uh, more accurate recommendations again. Telemedicine could be applied to pathology, it could be applied to cardiac intensive care, it could be applied to dermatology, it could be applied to rheumatology, to every single specialty. Telemedicine can be used to deliver optimal care. In other words, telemedicine can be a virtual hospital. We have developed a very important tool, which is a telemedicine card that uh, has a, a camera and, in addition, a computer also inside and with that allowed us wireless to communicate within 30 or 40 seconds any miles away as long as they have internet services. In the country we only have about less than 200 board certified pediatric dermatologists and in this entire city including about a 200 mile radius around the city there are only two pediatric dermatologists who are board certified so as you can imagine we have a huge need for getting new patients in and new patients who need consults to be seen and sometimes there aren't enough of us to meet those needs so we have developed a means by which we can um, do initial consultations um, via telemedicine, where in a secure fashion, a referring physician will actually download um, a digital image of the patient that they want our opinion about. Um, they'll tell us a short story with their history, their medications and allergies, and we can log on and actually offer our advice, um, usually within a very short period of time, much shorter than would be the regular wait for that patient to come in as a new patient to our practice. Clearly, if you don't have experience often with something, then your skills wane over time, and there's multiple studies in the literature that show that. Um, what we do know is that the more frequent you have refreshers, the better you're going to remember the techniques and the knowledge that come along with that. So I think, again, for these rural hospitals, who might only see four to five sick kids a year, the more often they have education about it, the better prepared they're going to be when it actually happens. And again, telesimulation is a way to do that. They can't go through you know, a two-day course every three months to keep up their skills because that's not efficient for time or cost. However, we can offer them a half-hour course once a month that reviews one particular topic via telesimulation, whether we're there, they're watching us, we're watching them in debriefing, and that way people can keep up their skills. It's what's kind of called a continuous model of learning, which is really where medicine is going, uh, because we do know that you just need, you need more frequent refreshers. The advantage of telemedicine is that the high definition transmission provides us incredible clarity with regard to what we see. So in essence, we are at the bedside, even though the bedside is at a distance from Children's Hospital. So the advantages include that we can provide rapid, accurate, real-time advice and provide our experience and our expertise to the referring physicians and clinicians. There are people in this hospital beyond the emergency department that are available 24-7, and so telemedicine provides those clinicians in the outlying areas access to that pediatric expertise 24-7. So using telemedicine for communication with referring facilities is inevitable. It's, it's absolutely the wave of the future. A lot of what you need to know to do critical care you can tell from the door of a room. Um, you can see whether a child is in trouble or not in trouble. Because I can't expect any ER that doesn't routinely see children and then doesn't see a high volume of sick children to do a perfect job taking care of a very sick child. It's just impossible. And with our expertise you know, right on over their shoulder, we can help them. Thank you.